guys, welcome to the channel. This is Adam with ND72, and here we're with my 2004 SL55 AMG. So, I've had the car for a little bit. I've done a few cosmetic mods, as you saw in the last video, or maybe it's the next video. Sometimes I get a little confused, but I'm pretty sure it was the last video. So, we got the car looking a lot better, a lot cleaner and more fun, I think. So now we're going to tackle the kind of elephant in the room, and something that everyone does with an M113K motor is modifying it. So, our first modification is going to be something that I'm going to do because it's 100% free to me because I have all these parts from other builds and it's something that I've kind of been toying around with and it's something that I will have to do for a future mod. So yes, I am kind of jumping a step a little bit, but you're going to notice with this build, I bought some stuff on Black Friday. That is not the traditional way of people modifying these cars. More or less how people usually do it, they first do pulley, tune, then they go to cooling, then they do like long tube and then throttle bodies. I went a little bit of a different route, mainly because I want to see what would happen if you modify it in a different way. And I think it's going to be an even safer way of modifying stuff. So we're going to get to the one today that this is, this modification is going to be complained about by some people and thought cool by other people. Now, what we're going to be doing today is messing with the intake system on the C on the M113 K motor. So with my SL55, it's basically the same intake as all the other ones. Air box, air goes in, filters, pretty effing straightforward. But the big disadvantage is when you start going to like bigger throttle bodies, like 92 millimeter throttle bodies, this system just does not work anymore. So the biggest problem is once you go, so these are 74 millimeter, some of the SLs are 80. But once you go to like 92 or 105 or 95, you can't fit the factory setup on there unless you do some modifications. I think a few companies offer a different Y pipe and then the box doesn't fit, so on and so forth. Now, you have a few options. You can, from what I saw, you could kind of modify the VRP setup, which is the same one I got on my CLS 55. Maybe I'll throw a picture somewhere around here of what it looks like now the issue with that setup as a few people already find out the silicone couplers when you start getting too much power they collapse i don't want to deal with any of that also this does look so much better i will say this does look pretty cool you do get all that like cool fancy air stuff now so how this system works is i'm going to take this girl off in a little bit but there's little holes over here where air shoots up into here into a panel and it gets sucked and then it goes into the y that's cool and all but what I'm going to do is something I've done on my E55 and it's proven to work, but I'm modifying it a little bit. Bam. I'm going to be putting the same exact mushroom filter I had on my E55 that I demonstrated in a video that it is more efficient and better on these cars. I'm going to put that link to that video somewhere over here. Go watch it. I'll take up a second. So now that you watch that video, you know that this is proven and then it works. Now there are some downsides to it a little bit and that's what we're going to take care of here. But first of all, we got to rip apart this intake system and that's super easy. These just literally like pop up, pop up and pull out and then I'll show you what it looks like with no intake. So here it is with no intake. Another benefit about those intakes, if you need to get to a coil pack or anything, it takes like literally probably five minutes to pop all these off. It's very easy. That's another benefit of this system. Now, so how it usually goes is here's the throttle body and once you go too big on the throttle body you can't fit anything like i said so we're going to measure we're going to put this in there it should bolt directly right in it was on my e55 and then i'll show you the cool little extra thing i'm doing and bam installed now here is disadvantage and advantages so with the air box that goes over here for that one gets super heat soaked and you basically cook your ear so you're developing hot air that comes in there and you cook it that kind of sucks because it takes this whole area. There's no place for any of the air to actually get past. So now people are saying, oh, you're sucking in hot air. You're sucking in hot air. Okay, yes, but you have an intercooler system that's supposed to be cooling down the air. And as I proved in the other video, the temps are basically the same, if not even better at that in the beginning. Now, so here's my other idea. So yes, it's, you get like no real fresh air, no nothing with this setup, but I fix that. And I'm going to show you how to do it without cutting apart your engine. Anything for relatively cheap. Well, for me, because it was free. Right here, these pipes are what's going to make this car run so much more efficient. You'll get cool supercharger noise. And it should solve that problem of getting air that's cooked and hot air and all that stuff. If it's not going to solve it, it's going to help it. Also, what I'm going to do, I already put these on the car for a while. They're already tested. But I'm going to do another mod that anyone could do if you want to keep the stock gearbox or not. 
that's going to help the performance of your vehicle. But first, I'm going to show you what these look like installed. I'm going to show you how effing easy these are to install with actually live footage of me installing these. Hopefully I don't F it up, but I'm going to show you really quick. Okay, so I got my piping. They literally go right in to the factory sucking area. And then you take one of your bolts, and these are factory Mercedes bolts. They didn't come from this part of the engine, but they came from it. And then you could just take it, and they screw in. This one's a little bit more difficult. Got to take the watch off for that. You get your ratchet with your 10, fits perfectly in there. Easily, perfectly one handed. And now we're going to hop to the other side. Same thing goes into the factory little mount. Bam, all installed that easily. That took me maybe two, three minutes and it took a little bit long because this is an effing hot motor. I literally just got home from work while I'm doing this. So if it was a little bit colder, I could have got my hand in there, not so much, ah, ah, ah. but it is what it is. Now we're gonna go over this setup and show you how I think it's so much better. So now you have all the benefits of the cone where you could basically hear your cool supercharger whine, you're getting no restricted air, just sucking it in, and now you got cold air. So, air is now being shoved in as you drive, and the faster you go, it's being slammed into there. Cold, fresh air. Now, here are the mounts. Granted, you could criticize my welds if you really want. I'm not the best welder, so with a Harbor Freight welder. So we got some little stuff, and I made the mounts over there, and they go right in to the factory grommets on the valve cover. It's pretty effing sturdy. I coated it powder coated it so it's holding up pretty well same thing with the other side they come right into here and now you're basically getting ram air going, slamming into that general area now in a perfect world what i could do eventually which i am going to do but i want to wait until because i am upgrading the throttle body i want to see how much room i am going to put a little shield down there so now it's basically just getting this air and then there's no silicone couplers for it to collapse on there's no nothing and this is a still very easy install. And also with heat management, now the heat that comes off can just basically go past it and go somewhere else. It doesn't get soaked into the box because you have all this room. And it helps out with serviceability. If I'm having like an issue with the car, I literally could just look right over and be like, oh no, that's broken. Oh no, something with the coil or something with an injector or something like that. Easily, easily diagnose, add more. Nice and neat, and I think it still looks pretty cool. Now, I will like paint it, like paint everything and make it look better, but I think for right now, it looks pretty cool. Like, I'm super happy with it. You got plenty of clearance, but now we're gonna show you under the grill in this cheap, easy mod that you can do. So right here is factory blockers for where the air comes in. So normally the air would be coming in factories. Everyone thinks the faster you go, the more air comes in. No, it gets rammed in here from the factory. So always a cheap little mod is to cut these things off because then this is the holes it gets to go shoot right up in there right up in there so we're gonna do a little test okay so now we're gonna do a small little science experiment to show you these flaps once you remove them will allow even on a stock air intake system it'll allow air actually to ram in because i have my handy dandy leaf blower not sponsored if you look up there granted i'm not a scientist this is not scientific this is literally just practical physics 
I'm gonna blow air through here, just like you would be driving down the road, and we're gonna see if that paper even blows away or even moves. So, let's try it. Literally nothing. So now, I'm gonna go grab a little razor and cutting apparatus, remove that, and see what happens then. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's see how easy it is to kind of cut this away. I'm gonna cut it away, and then I'm gonna show you, we're gonna see how easy it is with a razor blade. Okay, not easy at all with a razor blade. I'm gonna go get some proper cutting apparatus, and we'll be right back. Okay, now we got that teeny little piece cut away. I literally could go pretty far in there with my fingers. Pretty nicely. Now we're gonna take the exact same blower, blow it in there and see if that paper gets blown away. If it doesn't, then I look like an idiot. All right, I'm gonna actually pull the camera over there because I could actually see it blowing around over there. Let me show you. Blowing it. And just so you know, we'll go to the other side that's not cut yet with the same paper. And let's see if it moves. This is not cut. Move over. Nothing at all. And look, the other side, even when I'm blowing, see, look, I got the blower right here. It pushes so much air through this side, it's actually blowing over there. All right, that's actually kind of a better way to show you it, so you know I'm not doing any trick or All right, so we're gonna put the paper, and I'll put it like, uh, okay. We'll put it like this, try a different way. All right, so paper's like that. Blower's literally in the hole. See, blower in the hole. Push this paper away. Now we're gonna do it with the side that is not secured. Uh -uh. Come on. Let's get in there. There you go. It's pretty much in there. And then we get the blower. Same hole. Nothing. So 100%, now I'm gonna cut this side. So all I really did so far is you just cut it and now you have all that room over there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. You slice right down there and then you can cut this off right as a square. Super easy, free cheat mod, should do no damage. And also, if you kind of look at it, air also now is hitting the radiator side to help cool that, that part down too. So win-win in every way. But we're gonna put everything back and we're gonna discuss a little bit. So now you got the grill all cut out, and still if people are saying, oh no, with the grill you got no flow. No, literally you still do. It's a crap little flow with this grill. So, this system is going to work so much better than that factory setup, in my opinion, especially when you start upgrading these. Because you have no silicone couplers in this system to collapse. You have no real restriction at all. It's going to suck as much air as it could through here, and you're still getting cold air shoving through there. Now also... Once I do my 92 millimeter throttle body and my bigger snout and all that stuff, I'm still gonna have clearance for all that stuff and it's gonna make this car scream and sound so much more whinier. Even at this state when I'm driving down the highway, I can still hear a pretty good whine, but I'm factory pulley, it's a factory car. This is basically the only modification on it for power wise. So I'm super hyped about it, but now what we're gonna do, we'll take it out for a little test drive, just get some baseline data. So I do start modifying it and we will see how much power and how much fun we get out of this car. Hey guys, you guys got an SL55, an SL500, an SL600, SL65 with ABC suspension? You do? Are you tired of every time you come out just for a couple hours or a full night and your car is slammed down to the ground when it's not supposed to be? Me too, so I did something about it. Bam, this is what you need to get. A set of silver coilover conversion kits for the R230 chassis. This will help you with any of your ABC problems. Completely delete the system and drop a few LBs in the process. So if you want to look more into this kit or buy the kit yourself, you can go to silver-na-com, look up the R230 chassis. They also do custom spring rates for you. You just gotta email and tell them what you want. They have a couple other extra stuff, like even a low, low, low setup, and a few other little things that are just like little add-ons that might make you a little bit happier. And this kit seems very good quality. I'm gonna be super happy for it. And when you contact them, if you purchase it, just say you saw, a little bit about them at ND72's YouTube channel. All right guys, so we're out here in sunny Mexico. Now I've been driving a car around for about an hour, so it's hot, it's about 90 degrees out. But we're gonna do a little pull, so I'm gonna show you some data. We're gonna have a little fun and test this bad girl out. All right, so we're over here. Let's hit record on the data. Uh, here we go, record. We're gonna try to film some of this stuff. All right, there's record. We're gonna do a nice little 20 pull. Now we'll go over the data. 
Okay, so we pulled over, and I've been, I was driving the car for about an hour and all that stuff right before we did the pool. I got my McDonald's in here. It's roughly 90 degrees out. So let's get this whole thing ready to play and see what the data was. All right, load up, load up, load up. Get some of that glare out of there. There you go. So this was roughly a 20 pool in Mexico. Air intake temp started at 100, so 10 above ambient, which is actually pretty good. And then it shoots up. So we max out at right under 10 PSI of boost and 149 of uh, temp. So that's roughly 60 over ambient, which is basically a stock car. It doesn't recover that well either. As you can see, we're stuck at like 130 and all that stuff. So this is a stock car with my intake, and it's definitely better than it was with no intake. But now we kind of have like a good baseline. So, I definitely already proved in my other video, maybe I'll like follow the link below for my E55 one where I showed the cone filter is better than the air box. Because even as you've seen, I was driving for over an hour and we start off with only 10 degrees above ambient, which is pretty effing good. It's 90 degrees. I was driving the car in traffic for like an hour and a half. We do our pools. We are, we are about like um, 60 degrees above is where it shot up, which is not really the best. But I have no cooling mods to the car, completely factory. So it is what it is, and we're at right under 10 PSI. So yes, we'll be adding more boost to the car. We'll be adding a lot of other fun stuff, but this is a good kind of baseline. So I hope you guys like this like cheap little fun little mod for me to do. If you guys don't like it, throw your comments down. We'll have a nice little fun discussion. But need to say, this is Adam Andy 72 Hope you guys want to throw a comment down, throw a like down. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on almost any social media platform you can find me on. And the more people who comment and like and even just watch my ads, the better it helps me out. And if you guys got any more suggestions of what you want to try, we'll do that. Most likely our next videos for the SL55 are going to be another testing where I'm going to go do like a 60 to 130 pool. I got a tune ordered for the car. I got uh, cooling mods for the car. I got a bigger throttle body for the car. We got a lot of stuff that's going to be pretty fun and pretty exciting. So stay tuned, guys, and catch you later.